Right, so welcome back to Fly Fishing Rutland Water. Today's episode is titled Reservoir Monsters. I'm in the boat here with Tony Mould, the monster catcher. We're having a fun day out today. We both had cracking fish this week, so it doesn't really matter if we catch anything. Now, you know that's a lie. Um, but um, I really just kind of came out today so we could tell the stories of our reservoir monsters. So later on in the session, we're going to switch everything around and Tony will be the, the centre of attention. He's going to tell you the story of the, the monster from Barnhill Creek. And um, it all started last Friday. I had a scouting trip down to Old Hall to see the state of the weed beds and they look really quite nice. So that afternoon I decided to go down and give Old Hall a try at dusk. Um, I had originally planned to fish Armley Wood, but I changed my mind at the last minute and went to Old Hall. When I was fishing down at Old Hall, Craig Barr posted a picture on Facebook where he was fishing. And I recognised it immediately from the tree in the background. He was here at Armley Wood. Um, he then messaged me later on that evening to tell me that he'd lost two fish and he'd, he'd turned up another couple as well. Um, so it said there was definitely fish in this weed bed. There was no fish in the weed beds at Old Hall, but clearly there was a lot of fish here. And Craig said he was thinking about coming down on the uh, following morning for sunrise. So I set my alarm for early Saturday morning and came down, only to find that Craig wasn't there. Um, it was also not, oh wow, that was a big fish that came out of the water right in front of the, 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 the fence there. Um, so I came down, it was an absolute flat calm and I just went out to the weed bed, threw the fly out um, so that it was just over the weed bed and I got a cracking brownie on the third cast which I lost because I wasn't prepared. I didn't have the net with me so I was backtracking through the weed trying to get the net and I just lost contact with the fish. But I persevered, kept on fishing for a bit longer and then about half an hour in I got another one. This one was a cracking rainbow, about the five pound mark. And uh, I caught it and released it really nicely. I was fishing on Monday with a chap called Bob Shaw, uh, who I met through the Fly Fishing Large Reservoir group. We actually won the, the fun competition at Grafham. Um, he was the, we had the best boat catch and I had the, the biggest overall catch. So Bob and I fished the spot. Now Bob's never really done this type of fishing before and we literally bounced along the weed beds for the first hour and Bob was getting a fish nearly every cast not catching them but getting the boils I did I hardly got anything because I was fishing left-handed off the engine on this side so I gave Bob prime position to be able to hit the edge of the weed beds and uh, he was rising fish on every cast he had three fish within about the first hour all absolutely lovely all rainbows and then I lost a, a nice brownie. Then I lost another rainbow. Um, I got a lovely fish, which I released safely back into the water. Right, Tony, this is the spot. This is the spot, this is the spot where I got mine, absolutely, just here. And actually mine was half past three as well. Because we'd gone all the way around to Spud Bay and we came back just at the end of the day. It was like this, there was no cloud. Then the cloud came over and we were going to go down to Normanton and at the last minute I thought, do we go to Normanton but, but, but we don't know if there's anything there or do we go back to where we know there's fish but the cloud was maybe, the lack of cloud was putting them off. So we came back here and about third cast then I got, I, I got the bugger. The uh, this is the exact spot that I caught me eight pound brownie on Monday and this is the fly that it took. I think it's actually one of Craig Barr's poppers. Um, now, this is the spot where I caught my eight pound trout. It played really, really hard. I think I played it for probably around, oh, it must have been at least 10 minutes, possibly even 15 minutes. How close, were you just close to the bank? Uh, no, I was actually in the deeper water. Right. It was actually, we were drifting along the bank and in the afternoon I positioned us in the deeper water yeah. and it, it actually took it, there was some wind lanes. It actually took on the edge of the wind lane. Um, but it played for a long, long time. It was really tight. It did some really powerful runs. And I had to, um, at the end, I was terrified of it coming off at the end, so I actually loosened the tension, and I think that's the reason I got it in, was just giving it that little bit extra slack. 
But then when I did get it in, it, it took an absolute age to revive. I was really worried for a, for a, that it wasn't going to go back. But I, I, eventually I had it in the water, kept on moving it so the water was going through the gills. And then eventually it, uh, it kind of kicked and went off. But the, the brilliant thing was it did a, a swim by the boat. And we got this beautiful picture of the fish, like full fins, everything. And then just at the end, it kind of did like a wave and went under the boat. It was almost like, it was like, I thought that was nice. Right, so we're here at the mouth of Barnhill Creek. And this is the spot where Tony caught his 12 pound brownie on Tuesday. Three days ago, I had a short afternoon session after doing some work in the morning and uh, decided to start on the fence end at uh, the other side of Armley Wood, which is about a mile down that way. And uh, <clears throat> because um, I know John and um, Craig had been down there, caught a few fish um, in the previous days, but the wind was a bit awkward, so it kind of blowing into the bank almost. So I had a few casts and realized it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna happen, so. I moved uh, down in here, here into um, Barnhill Creek, which is normally fairly, fairly reliable for me, and it's uh, caught a few fish in here uh, this summer when it's been tough elsewhere, so it's been quite good to me. Uh, started on the popper initially and didn't uh, have any follows for about the first half an hour, but decided not to move and to kind of stick it out and uh, put a couple of uh, daddies on, uh, foam daddies on a floater and had some interest straight away and had a, a rainbow about three and a half pounds followed by another one that I lost. Um, so obviously there were some fish there. Um, and then about sort of 15 minutes after the second fish I had, well I saw a fish move actually just on the surface and I cast in its sort of general direction and hooked it straight away and uh, saw its head come up followed by its tail and uh, it was quite a gentle take really for a big fish um, but instead of tearing off into the middle of the lake it uh, buried its head in the weed um, so it's it was there for probably three or four minutes so I tried to sort of give it as much as much pressure as I could without having to sort of, sort of pulling it out but I could feel it it was still there so I knew the fish was still there um, and that sort of carried on for about five minutes or so and it freed itself just for probably half a minute and then buried itself into some more weed which was uh, which was even more solid unfortunately so I decided just to move down the bank a little bit to give myself a bit more of a bit of a different angle to to pull on and that seemed to work quite well so it came pretty much straight in then um, pretty much as a dead weight sort of 12 pound of fish and uh, three pound of weed and uh, slipped it into the straight into the net um, so not really the fight you'd expect from a big fish, but it was um, quite an old fish, I think. So, uh, Tony, I think it was a very old fish. It was a very, it, it was a very old fish. Um, and so I managed to get a picture of it. There was a lady actually walking a dog behind me on the bank. She watched me land the fish. I didn't realise she was there until I turned around. And she very kindly uh, took a picture for me very quickly. Um, so it was only out of the water literally for probably only a minute, maximum of a minute I would think. Uh, so I turned around with the fish in the net to uh, to revive it or at least try and revive it in the shallows and of course the water's still fairly warm so that was always going to be a bit of a difficult task with such an old fish and uh, I was probably there for probably 45 minutes trying to revive it and it would give the odd kick but every time it kicked it kind of went down straight down and she kind of went belly up oh, right. so the signs weren't good that's probably a mark of the age of the fish Tony I'm sure it was yeah and then um, luckily a boat came well luckily a boat came past and it was um, it was Craig Barr's brother Ian and his boat partner and they came in the sea I was struggling with this fish and um, they took it out in the boat to, uh, to take it into some deeper water perhaps there was a bit more maybe a bit more oxygen and a little bit cooler water further out so they gave it a good go for about another 20 minutes and uh, it just went downhill and by the time by the time I brought it back 
to me on the bank it was the literally there was no life in it at all so unfortunately it didn't go back which was you know it leaves a bit of a sour taste but um still a fish of a lifetime i mean to be fair tony i think that that fish was always going to die you see the the age of it yeah. you know that when it's going through something like that so i actually think you probably did it a favor i think if you'd if you'd if it had gone back It'd have probably saw a few feet and then gone probably to the depths and never never returned. So I think <coughs> maybe, maybe so, shouldn't yeah. feel bad at all about that. I think you no. you, you did it a favour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still a hell of an achievement, Tony. Yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased, and it took a, obviously it took a couple of days to to sink in, as, as these things do. What you've achieved, but um, it'd be nice to do it again and get see it see it swim away. I think it was even better because uh, you obviously you, you you were having a chat with me and Craig about our exploits a couple of days before. <laughs> Uh, and your Facebook post really couldn't have been any more negative. I'm going to go down, but I'm really not going to give it a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go and do that, which I think is yeah. absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I think I think it's because I was, you know, no, I just wasn't expecting to catch anything really. I just came down, um, just because it was a nice afternoon and I got a bit of spare time really. So it was, uh, it was. I would say it was a lucky fish because I'd obviously connected with some fish before that. So uh, there was. You know, I, I was obviously doing the right thing. Fish right in the bay there. And I gather you gave Craig a bit of a surprise as well. Yes, I did actually, yeah. Because I'd bought some uh, some flies from Craig at the weekend and forgot to pick them up on the Monday. I went to on the Tuesday after I'd caught the fish to Craig, because he lives just down the road from me, uh, to pick the flies up. And uh, lo and behold, I had a, had a 12 pound uh, brown trout in there in the uh, in the boot so i got that out and we had a bit of a picture with that because obviously it was caught with one of his flies so um that was quite a good uh, quite a good thing to do to and, and to show him i can actually catch a fish as well which was nice <laughs> can you show them the flies tony yeah just a uh, tiny tiny flies aren't they really john these yes. uh... <laughs> okay well we just have to catch another one tony because we're in exactly the same we spot are now, now we... exactly the same spot in fact, I think you'll probably be able to see my my wader marks as we pass them. <laughs> right, well, thanks for coming out fly fishing on Rutland Water with me today. Um, it's been a real pleasure because this is the first time that I've actually had a guest on the boat with me. Um, so it's been a pleasure to have Tony Mould with me today. And between the two of us, you know, we caught over 20 pounds of specimen brownie on Monday and Tuesday. So. As always, if you uh, like the video, please make sure you hit the like button. And I would be delighted if you would subscribe to the channel to see more of my fishy adventures. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.